Welcome to another episode of A Brother With Questions. Man, I appreciate y'all for joining me, man. Uh, please remember to always like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm back, y'all. I am back. I had to I had to take a little hiatus on my Monday drop. I uh, wasn't feeling the best on Monday, but uh, we are here for the Thursday drop, and I'm excited, ready to go, man. I'm going to drop on y'all what I was feeling on Monday. So as, as you look over the weekend, I don't know if you was paying attention to the news over the weekend, but there was a lot of talk about how support or the black support for uh, Donald Trump is increasing. And over the weekend, it, it, apparently the Democrats were freaking out a little bit. Like, wait a minute. How can they be loving Donald Trump the racist? <laughs> so you know what they did? You know what they did over the weekend? They sent out the attack dog. That's what I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him the attack dog. They sent out old Al Sharpton. I'm sorry, I had the rib right now. Al Sharpton over the weekend to speak. Uh, he was on Joy Reid's platform. Let's take a listen real quick. And apparently, if you let Trump people tell it, the March on Washington was about freeing Donald Trump. Like, they're literally trying to take everything that has happened in real life to black Americans and say, that isn't real. You can't teach that in school. We've made it illegal for you to even talk about it. None of that systemic racism is real. But all the things black people have ever said about systemic oppression are true, but only about this one guy. Your thoughts? Well, I think that when you look at the Powell case being misused in this fashion, let's not go back to the 1930s. Let's go to the 1990s when five young black and brown young men were falsely accused of raping a white woman in Central Park. It was Donald Trump that took out ads in the papers in New York saying they should get the death penalty. So they want to cite how blacks have been abused by the criminal justice system, cite the case where we marched and eventually it was proven, these five young men that Donald Trump called on to get the death penalty was in fact innocent. So we don't have to go by history, go by Trump's history and go by what he did. The only case of race in the criminal justice system that I've ever seen Donald Trump stand up for in New York where he's a native was where he called for the death penalty of five innocent young black and brown young men. That is the answer. And black men need to know that they were all young black men. One spent 13 years in jail. He was with us for the march on Washington on Saturday. Let them come and tell the rappers and others that are being seduced by Trump what he did in his hometown to innocent black men while we were marching around their innocence. So they're going back to the 30s because they can't go back to New York where he discriminated against black with housing and where he discriminated against these five young men and helped cause their uh, long sentences that they were innocent of all along. And that is coming from somebody, by the way, y'all, who knows Donald Trump and has known him for decades, okay? So he's not saying what he thinks. He's saying what he right, knows. Stop right there, man. So here we go. We got the uh, good reverend. Uh, I saw... Yeah, they're talking about the March on Washington, and, and just before that, I saw some pictures of the Reverend Al sitting down with uh, President Joe Biden. So I'm sure uh, sometime after that, you know, he was, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it, he was instructed to go out and have a conversation with black men about their quote-unquote misguided, uh, misguided attraction to Donald Trump. And so here's what I find laughable about this. So in order to talk about his example of why black men should not be seduced, if you will, I think that's the word he used, by Donald Trump, he trots out this idea um, related back to the Central Park Five and where Donald Trump uh, took out ads uh, calling for the conviction of these young men uh, during their trial in the 1990s, uh, as well as, as he said, the death penalty, um, if you will. Here's what I'm laughing about this. If you go back and actually read the articles uh, where Donald Trump took out the ads, um, so he did call for a conviction of these young men. But what I find interesting about that is that so did the rest of the city. And so the rest of the city 
because of the young white lady um, who was raped um, in the park and basically, um, I guess you could kind of say she was left for dead. I believe that's the way they tell the story. Um, uh, she did not die from a, um, but, uh, but, but she was certainly badly beaten and bruised when they found her. Um, and so, yes, he took out the ad, but he was only expressing the sentiment of the city at the time. And so I find that as a hard case to prove his quote unquote racist tendencies towards black people. Um, and then, and then I also, you know, have to consider the source because the, the, this, this idea that Donald Trump is this racist white man and has been racist for the last, you know, all these years that he's been prominent in New York, I just find laughable altogether. Um, this is a man who, during the 90s and even probably the early 2000s, who courted the black celebrity as a part of his clout um, and claimed the fame. I mean, just look at, we don't even have to go far. Let's just take a look at the dozens of photos that he took with good old Reverend Al during, the, during this time. So Reverend Al is telling me about how he's racist, but yet Reverend Al doesn't seem to have a problem posing in a picture with a huge smile on his face with Donald Trump. So, and this picture right here, we can look at this picture with Reverend Al, his wife, Russell Simmons. You know, this had to be from the 90s because we still got Big Al. <laughs> You know, he had the surgery, got the and got his stomach, and uh, once he did that, you know, he turned into Little Al that we know now today. So here you are telling me about how much racist he saw, racist he is, but here you are in a picture with a big old smile on your face during this same period in time that I'm supposed to remember his racism towards black people, and 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 I and then, you know we can go through the go through the list. I mean, you had him with pictures. Of, here's another one right there of him and Diddy. Okay, I mean, this is the racist white man who hates black people, but who loves to take pictures with famous black people. I mean, what kind of racist is this who loves being in pictures with the same people that he hates? I mean, this is the fallacy of this argument that the same man who y'all died to take pictures with, who y'all was trying to get all up in his apartments because they were, I guess, you know, I guess they were supposed to be some of the nicest buildings in New York at the time, and yet now all y'all want to do in, in, in 2016 and beyond is tell me how racist he is. So so what's the truth? Was he racist in this picture with Diddy and Al and Russell Simmons? Was he racist then? Was he racist in the picture with Donald, uh, with Don Lemon? Not Don Lemon. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. No, not Don Lemon. My bad. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the famous promoter. I can't even think of his name right now. Uh, it is Don, though, but I can't think of the last name. But yes, was he racist then? I just don't understand why they are so hard pressed to convince black people that the same white man they took pictures with in the 90s and 2000s has all of a sudden been a racist his whole life, even when he was taking pictures with them. And again, I told you, I'm not even on the Donald Trump is, I'm not on the Donald Trump train. I'm not here to tell you Donald Trump is the best candidate here. That's not even my point. My point is simply stop telling me the buffoonery. Stop telling me the fallacy of what this man is when you yourself can't even hold up to the, to the, to the, uh, to the stick and prove what you say. I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of hearing this narrative. If you want me to not vote for Donald Trump, give me policy reasons why I don't need to vote for Donald Trump. Stop telling me about this false racism thing that he is. Stop telling me about how he hates black men so much. Stop telling me about how he hates black women so much when nothing but the evidence shows that if he was as racist as you claim, I don't know any racist who are taking pictures with black people with big smiles on their face. I'm sick of it. You can't argue on the merits, apparently, because if you could, I think you would. 
So yet you keep trotting out racism. To me, that shows the weakness of your argument. That that shows another reason why black men, black women need to look sideways every time you tell us Donald Trump is a bad guy. Because if your arguments were that strong, whether you wanted you whether you thought Joe Biden was the guy or whether you thought somebody else was the guy, if your arguments were so strong, you'd argue on the merits of policy. And stop talking about racism. Because racism is a boogeyman for the Democrat Party. Anytime you don't like a person, especially a Republican, the first thing they try out is you know you're racist. They don't talk about what his policies are. They don't talk about how, quote unquote, he's been negative uh, to uh, how his policies are hurting the black community. No, 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 no. First thing they say, you know he racist, right? And then all of a sudden, black people go supposed to run scared. Oh my gosh! Not another racist white man. Not Joe Biden again. <laughs> oh gosh! I'm sick of it. Keep your comments to yourself. The man ain't won the nomination. He's still trying to win the nomination. Even though he may be the leading contender, not one vote has been cast. So let's wait. Let's see what the votes say. And if he wins, so be it. But I hope you got a better conversation. Reverend Al, Democratic Party, then Donald Trump is a racist. Because I'm sorry. It ain't cutting it. It ain't cutting it. That's why you see the numbers on the rise. Because it ain't cutting it no more. Because if that's all you got, that tells me you don't have nothing. And if I'm wrong, tell me what you got. But you better not say nothing about racism. Hey, man, I'm done. I'm your guy, B. Period, man. Again, man, I, I, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, we got our TikTok channel as well. We got our Instagram channel. We got our Facebook. Uh, so go and like and subscribe to all those as well, man. We appreciate all the love, man. I'm your guy, B period, man. I'm out, man.